I was able to flip this $100 violin into a $10,000 violin. I know this sounds like a scam, but this is the best $100 I've ever spent. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you the greatest investment I've ever made. Now, I haven't sold this violin yet because I just love it so much, but if I did, I would have a 9,900% profit. Hey, I mean, that's better than what my stocks are doing at the moment. And I'm going to give you a breakdown on how much it costed me to have it professionally restored. So stay until the end to hear how this beauty sounds like. So just a bit of context, uh, I was on Facebook Marketplace one Sunday morning uh, when I see this post. And immediately I think to myself, that violin kind of looks beat up. It's got a lot of missing things, like the bridge, strings, one of the pegs, a chin rest. This violin at the moment is not playable. Alibaba can't play on it. Joe Biden can't play on it. Nobody can play on this violin. And I also couldn't tell whether there were any cracks on this instrument because whoever was taking these pictures uh, probably used a potato as a camera. Uh, they were kind of blurry. I couldn't really tell. And honestly, I thought it was a gamble to have it professionally restored without knowing how the end product will sound like. And there's no guarantee that it will sound good after it has been restored. And you know what you're looking for whenever you're uh, buying an instrument is mainly how good it sounds like. So I was in a little bit of a pickle. I didn't know really what to do. You'd be a buffoon if you bought a violin without hearing how it sounds. You can estimate how it will sound based on several things, such as the shape, the type of wood, the year it was made in. Uh, you can also do something called like a tap test to see how well it resonates. But there's no way I could know for sure, and so I messaged the owner to schedule a visit. Upon looking at this violin, I noticed uh, a couple of interesting things. First of all, the label says uh, it's a copy of an Italian model. Now, I'm not sure if this is Italian or... Latin, and I'm not going to read this because I'm definitely going to butcher the pronunciation. And this is a violin that was copied from a model from uh, 1719. I, I didn't really know that much about the luthier. I tried to Google him, uh, but I didn't find much. And I also noticed that it said copie de, uh, which means uh, copy of in French, uh, which suggested the possibility of it being a French violin. Now, when I went to see the violin, uh, the owner told me that her grandmother uh, purchased it in 1910 in France. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. When I heard that it was French, and in the beginning of the 20th century, I immediately thought of the Maricor period. Now, this was a period in France uh, during the early 20th century, and was a really important chapter in the history of violins. Maricor was a small town in northern eastern France, uh, and has been renowned uh, for violin making since the 18th century. And during this period, a wide variety of luthiers uh, started opening their shops and producing a wide variety of, of different violins. Now, the violins that were made uh, during this period were crafted in a very exceptional way uh, that blended both French and Italian influences. So in a way, if you try and imagine it, uh, it was basically like a side hustle trend where people started opening their violin shops uh, and trying to sell their violins uh, to people. And learning an instrument and classical music in general was very popular uh, in France during that time. Now, there's good news and bad news. The good news is if you manage to find a violin that was made from a, a popular luthier, chances are you've got a really, really fine instrument. The bad news is uh, because it was a very popular, trendy side hustle to do uh, in order to make a living, a lot of people who really didn't know what they were doing started making these violins. A lot of students, a lot of people who did this as a second job uh, started making these violins and unfortunately they were not the best quality. And although I had a lot of doubts about this violin, uh, I decided to buy it. And I was able to bargain it down to $100. Now here comes the fun part, restoring it or the financial burden. So I brought it to a friend of mine who is a luthier and he immediately recognized it as a French violin, which was good. Here's a breakdown of the costs uh, that it took to restore it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're enjoying the content thus far, like this video and subscribe because this video costed me a lot of money. So the strings were 75 uh, so the fingerboard wasn't really even, so he kind of had to sand it down, uh, which costed $75. Uh, the sound post was $25. Uh, the bridge itself, I had to get a new bridge, uh, $17.50. Afterwards, he had to shape the bridge. Every bridge has to be specifically tailored for each violin. Uh, so that service costed uh, $75. The body of the violin was starting to unglue because of its age. And so to glue it back together costed $50. Uh, the pegs costed $75. The chin rest, 
25 and the grand total ladies and gentlemen is $417.50 and because the majority of my audience is from the states the grand total comes down to $307.65 not bad so in total I spent around $500 on this violin and after a week or so he called me up to try it I was really scared I'm like oh I just threw $500 down the drain but when I tried it it sounded beautifully. This luscious tiger flamed instrument with ravishing cacao colors. Hmm. Wait, I, I just had a shower thought. Are cacao plants the same as coca plants? I'm digressing too much. Its round body overshadows the golden colossal sound it will pronounce. That scroll though looks like a delicious fruit roll. I mean, that's pretty much all I had to say about the physique of this violin. I'll play it in a second, but you'll notice that the sound is so perfectly balanced. The volume on each string is so consistent. It had such a golden, thick sound. It's simply amazing. So just to give you a perspective, this is a $100 violin that I bought from Amazon, and this is a $100 violin that I bought from Facebook Marketplace. So I'll play you the Amazon violin first, just so you can have an idea. And here is the $100 violin. Now, I don't know if the microphone can catch these little subtleties, but I feel like I can put so much more pressure uh, on the bow and achieve more richness in sound without fearing that uh, you know the sound will collapse so these are some of my observations on the lower strings uh, let me play something on the higher strings Now, I just want to warn you about something. It's very dangerous for you to just go out and purchase an instrument that you haven't heard before. Before you buy any instrument, it's very important for you to make your own research. Have a teacher or a professional come with you uh, and try out different violins. Uh, trust me, this is, this is the best advice I can give you if you're looking for a new violin. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and go practice.